Hey, good morning everybody. Today is Monday, March the 3rd, 2024. This is Wes Fryer in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I have a very important thought and message. And it is this, Jesus was not and is not fascist. This is really important. We have, throughout the history of Christianity, since the first days of the disciples, there have, there have been folks that have been confused about Jesus's message. Um, when I was living in Lubbock, Texas, going to Westminster Presbyterian Church, and by the way, uh, if you're interested in, I don't know how you found this video, uh, you can read more of my theology by going to westfriar.com slash theology. I was born and raised Presbyterian, basically been Presbyterian my whole life, except kind of for a year before we left Oklahoma, we, uh, we went to an Episcopal church for a while. But when I was in Lubbock, um, I read a book called The Gnostic Gospel, Gnostic Gospels by Elaine Pagels. She's a, a Princeton scholar and it's about Gnosticism. And this was an early movement in the Christian church that was really off track in a very fundamental way. Among other things, Gnosticism teaches that the light of God is within each one of us, and what we need to do is, you know, discover that and share that, different than what we find in the scriptures and we read that Jesus is the light. And when it comes to being a Christian, and by the way, this series of videos that I'm doing, which I call Wisdom with Wes, and you can link to more of these in the playlist below if you want. Usually this isn't a Christian focused message. This is for anyone, okay? Whether you're a Christian or not, I think it's important to know, you know, who Jesus was and what he professed. And he did not profess fascism. Anyway, Gnosticism as an example really misled a lot of folks and it's important and this is this is why in the in the in the Protestant Reformed tradition that I'm most familiar with and grew up in, you know, in Jesus name, we pray for the light of Jesus to be shared. It's not this, you know, mystical light that we, we each have. Um, you know, there is a unique spark and every human being is, is a gift of God and in the image of God, all of that. But my point is, Christians have gotten stuff wrong before, right? There was this whole thing called the Protestant Reformation, right? When we had indulgences and just some crazy things that were happening uh, at the time in the Roman Catholic Church, and, and folks had to be set straight. So let's talk about Jesus not being a fascist. Christian nationalism is a big topic in our news today. Uh, we have primary elections here in North Carolina this week. You know, we have a presidential election and congressional elections coming up in November. And so we have had throughout history, people who have conflated this idea of church and state. And one of the pillars of our democracy here in the United States, we have a representative democracy, has been the separation of church and state. There've been a lot of wars in, especially in Europe over religion, you know, between Catholics and Protestants. And it's one of the reasons it's so important to study history. Please, please, if you are thinking that Jesus supports dictatorship, supports the dissolution of the institutions of democracy, that we shouldn't have checks and balances in the country, that the chief executive should be able to do whatever they want via executive order. If you really are convinced of that, I encourage you to read the Bible, okay? First of all, please read Matthew 7, okay? In Matthew 7, Matthew talks about how we are able to judge whether or not someone is of God. And it's the fruit of that tree. What kind of fruits does that person bring forth, okay? Folks who are trying to speak in the name of God but who are filled with anger, who are filled with fear, who are fill, filled with, I think, blaming others. Othering is a really big thing we see politically now. And this is part of what is justifying for some people, oh, this idea of Christian nationalism, you know, and, and fascism, the support of an individual leader who can defy the institutions of, of democracy that, that the nation has. 
judge that person by the fruits. And so that takes me to, I think it's, I think it's Galatians 5. And that's where the Apostle Paul wrote about the fruits of the Spirit, okay? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit. Jesus was not a fascist. Jesus did not proclaim, hey, let's go lock up all the lepers, okay? Jesus was an advocate for the orphan, for the widow, for the immigrant, for the oppressed. Please read the Sermon on the Mount and realize Jesus wasn't kidding, okay? When he said, these are the things that, these are the ways we need to live our life. These are those who are blessed and these are the ways that we need to serve. It is really, even in January of this year, easy to be filled with a spirit of fear today. And what I encourage all of us to do is to meditate upon those things for which we can be thankful this day and to remember who Jesus was. And whether or not you are a follower of Jesus Christ today or not, it's really important to not be confused. And sadly, there are a lot of folks, I say a lot, there are some people that I think, I hope, are receiving an outside, outsized amplification, because you don't really know who the media is choosing to amplify. How many people are there out there who are believing this? But Wes Fryer, I'm here to share with you, I've read the Bible a few times, and I've read a lot of verses, and I've prayed, and I asked for God's Holy Spirit to inform me, and I absolutely know in my heart Jesus was not a fascist, and because I believe that he was resurrected from the dead and he lives today, Jesus is not a fascist, and Jesus doesn't call us to support fascism. That's my thought for today. Have a great one.